Why are people mean to animals? It doesn't make any sense. They lock them up in tanks or cages to perform at their events. I don't know why we have to do that. Why can't we leave them be? We're meant to share the world with animals. We should surely set them free. You're asking a very good question. And the answer's sort of tough. Some of our behaviour's really hard to justify, and many like you have had enough. It's true we humans have developed dominion over land and sky and sea, but whether we're the worthiest of shepherds isn't all that clear to me. But as with anything that makes us angry or stirs in us the need to fight, let's contemplate the motivations to find the ways to put things right. This is the tale of the dancing dolphins, the ones that skipped upon the waves. They breathe the air the same way we do and dance the deep for all their days. The sailors say they follow their vessels as they chart their ocean course, unafraid to skim the surface they'd somersault with little force. They're such a strange aquatic mammal, the kind to leave you in a trance. And soon the story started spreading about the ways the dolphins danced. Now I couldn't tell you how it started, and I don't know precisely when, but they began rounding up the dolphin pods and placing them in pens. They traded fish with them for backflips and gathered customers in groups, and for the price of an admission you'd sit and see them spring through hoops. Who could resist a sight so splendid, a creature intelligent and profound? Before long, to watch the dolphins dance, children flocked from miles around. And while our eyes grew hypnotised by the ballerinas of the sea, a bigger business bloomed and blossomed with everyone's collected fee. And after a while, the owners realised the newfound depths to their gold mine. They found that scouring the sea for servants was a whopping waste of time. And so now they bred new dancers, born into the tanks they made, because how could a dolphin that's never seen the ocean even know if it's enslaved? And this extends, my friend, past dolphins, elephants and jungle cats. It's true we humans have bad habits, but now we've built bad habitats. And before anyone got to wondering if this behaviour was any good, we'd built a beast so hard to banish that fed so many livelihoods. Now I know this makes us angry, but understand if you are able that people can be reluctant to look for kinder ways for that which puts food on their table. But here's the power you have, little one. It's just as important as your voice. As well as standing up for what you believe in, we all possess a consumer's choice. And since the world's compelled by commerce and we consumers are so many, the only practices that sustain are the ones where we choose to spend our pennies. I'm so excited by your empathy. And so many children just like you. Try to keep that kindness close with all the things you say and do. But can I really make a difference? There's only one of me and I'm small. My love, the way you live sets an example which could mean the difference to us all. Now this story isn't finished yet. But since we're between friends, let me tell you how I really hope our dolphin story ends. One day, a girl, about your age, while drawing after school, saw something that affected her that she knew deep down was cruel. She asked her brother how the world could allow such things she knew were wrong, and together they began a story with little hope it would catch on. And maybe somebody heard their words, and on that day made up their mind that they would help create the ending and the call to be more kind. And because your kindness is infectious, somehow it's spread across the world. Because who knows the power of an honest question when it's asked by you, my girl. <sighs> so keep being you. I promise it's working. And maybe one day, perhaps when you're grown, all this captivity will fade into memory. And the dancing dolphins will find their way home. <laughs>